So much talk about when it comes to inflation, when it comes to recession. What are your clients telling you? First of all, do they want to be fully invested or are they really worried about what's coming? Well, I'm not sure they're worried about what's coming. It's just very unclear as to what is coming. Um, I think that's where uh, most of our clients need the advice as to how to go about their portfolios. Uh, it is one of those times where you know it's pretty unique for us as a wealth manager, as a global wealth yeah. manager, to be able to be so close to your clients because now is the time to give advice. When everything is going into one direction or the other direction, it's pretty clear. Now it's pretty unclear. So now it is the time. Okay, what are or what is it that you're after? No. How would you want to protect your wealth or develop your wealth? And therefore, what is the best Thing to do. In the end, what you see at this moment, because yeah. it is unclear, is that you know they stay invested, but yeah. not m not more money is coming into the market. Yeah. So they are sidelining the money. Rough is when you earn your fees, right? This is like yeah. is active management back? Is this the only way to make money in the next 12 months? Uh, well, it's well. Active management only happens when there's also transactions, right? So it's, uh, and if there's no transactions, so, so you're not thinking. investing, yeah. then the money will not flow. So, uh, but I do think that th th this will not last for long. I think in the next three months, there will be much more clarity coming through as to the direction. Um, and it's clearly a, a couple of things. Is it, it's, I mean, we just went through, we had to dig uh, digest three major shocks, right? The pandemic shock, the war shock, and the energy transition shock. So supply shocks, demand shocks, all together mixed in one. Of course it is unclear uh, at this yeah. moment in time. So we'll have to kind of figure this one out, find bigger steps to maneuver yeah. uh, in order to settle. Right. And we need clarity also coming from, from, from China. So, you know, yeah. because that, that- But interest rates are going up. In Europe, interest rates are going up. That's so that's good. helpful for you guys. Absolutely, yeah. So it's uh, the rates getting into positive territory is a good thing, in my view. Uh, we can make bigger steps there. Yeah. Uh, real rates are still negative. Uh, so, uh, therefore, I do think that from a policy perspective, it may not be as no. bad to, 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 to make those moves. And it builds you a buffer for ammunition when you no. need it again. So, uh, so yeah, that's so a positive. Talk to me about the Rus Russian sanctions. How difficult is it actually going after this money of people that are sanctions without hurting, I guess, clients that, you know, that have not been sanctioned? Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> the point is, in essence, every Russian has been sentenced that ha doesn't have a, um, a permit to reside in the EU or Switzerland, right? So, because there's this general sanction as to if you receive 100,000 or pay 100,000, at least as a euro Swiss francs or 50,000 sterling, it, you are, we are to report and to control that money, right? So, and that goes for every Russian. The ones that have been living here for 20 years as a teacher whatsoever, or, you know, um, so that's the general sanction. Yeah. And then you have the more specific sanctions. Honestly, like we do everything, uh, uh, always with our clients, we're pretty straight. Yeah. This is what it is. Yeah. Uh, we have to deal with it. You have to deal with it. Uh, we have to comply with sanctions. Uh, yeah. They know UBS is, uh, is, is a global institution, so whether it's US sanctions, UK sanctions, yeah. EU sanctions, Swiss sanctions, but we right. have to comply. Was there a danger of over-sanctioning <clears throat> or that, that the banks actually took, you know, over sanctions just to make sure that they wouldn't get in trouble? And I don't know whether this is a danger or not or actually it was the right thing to do. Yeah, I mean, you have to go back to what is the purpose of sanction to begin with, uh, um, and that is more political decision. Mm -hmm. uh, for us, it is just to follow suit. Mm -hmm. um, in the beginning, it was more a discussion for us banks as to the clarity as to yeah. what the sanctions meant and how yeah. to comply with them. Um, and honestly, that has that has become much more clear mm -hmm. in, in, in the last couple of weeks. Uh, but in the beginning, some of these were a bit kind of developed in a haphazard way, mm -hmm. uh, issued, and, and, and clearly we complied with it. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, but thereafter, we had some more time to discuss, okay, mm -hmm. is this the situation that you mean? Is that the situation that you mean? Um, I have to ask about M&A, because I ask everyone about M&A, because we've been talking about it for like 15 years, and nothing's happened. Are you expecting cross-border? Do you want to be part of like a consolidation phase? There's always rumors. Never know rumors. Um, <laughs> honestly, so <clears throat> we have a strategy. We just came out with a strategy, yeah. a revamp of our strategy in February, where we made it very clear that you know we bank on the wealth trends in the world, yeah. where we see that most wealth will be created in Asia and the US. Um, 
Uh, if you want to really focus on those, then that's basically the geographies where we will invest. Um, we can grow organically. We're showing that every quarter. But in the US, as we have indicated, uh, we, uh, we have um, announced the acquisition of Wealthfront, which yep. is a digital uh, yep. wealth advisor. For the US, right? Are, that's this for is, the US. Yeah. Um, so yes, we are active, but we're active in a way that where we can kind of accelerate our organic yeah. plans by investing in skills, yeah. scale, or growth. Yeah. Uh, that's where we would be looking yeah. at. And you True think you can do border, well sir? in the U.S.? You can do well in the U.S.? How much are you expecting to actually, you know, be, be able to tackle that market? Um, well, completely, because we are a large player. Um, uh, we rank anywhere t number four, number five. Uh, so we have a sizable position there. Uh, we are profitable there. We're doing very well there, honestly. We are a... We're, we're as much as a U.S. player as we are as a Swiss player. I mean, we go back a long time in the U.S. from a wealth perspective, the old Payne Weber franchise, right? We're doing really well. We have very professional financial advisors. Mm -hmm. And for us, it is how can we make them even more effective? How can we support them in advising their clients? And how can they grow their business? Are, are, do you think you can take on, like, Wall Street titans in certain spaces? Um, on the wealth side, for sure. Absolutely. I wouldn't know why not. We are... Truly, the largest global network for private money, four and a half trillion. Mm. There's, n there's only one, that's UBS. Uh, it's not to brag, it's just what we are. And the question is, how do you bring it together? Yeah. And how do you make it interesting from all of your clients? So we're truly managing this as an ecosystem yeah. where we see Asian investment opportunities for US clients, and we see Brazilian investment opportunities yeah. for Asian clients. We bring entrepreneurs together, because entrepreneurs don't want to invest in public markets. Entrepreneurs want to invest and so, in entrepreneurs. Yes, and sometimes so they have liquidity issues, so they, they need their bankers more than anything exactly. else. If you look at Europe, consultants in Europe? Would you buy anything in Europe? Um, I want to separate the question here. <laughs> so, consolidation in Europe, uh, in the Eurozone, I think. I find it really difficult. Uh, I think that the SSM has done a tremendous job creating a level playing field. Um, I think they should ha get much more credibility for uh, and, and much more confidence uh, from the local mm -hmm. authorities and what they have done and built, mm -hmm. uh, also in terms of safety there. Uh, but as long as the local authorities sit on the capital, sit on the liquidity, there is not a lot of benefit for cross-border consolidation in the Eurozone. All right, um, Ruff, I also need to ask you about working from home. So, you know, I imagine that one of the things they think about the most is how to retain talent. Is that through bonuses or giving you flexibility to work at home? It's all was a mix. Uh, for us, it's very important that uh, we are um, uh, open and, and we, we, we basically issued that we want to continue to have flexible uh, working arrangements, uh, so hybrid working arrangements, uh, in a way that we think that it's important for anyone, but specifically also the generations to come, that uh, we offer them that's, uh, that, that flexibility. So we're not saying you all have to come back uh, to work, uh, but Within your team, you have to agree as to when are you all together in the office because I do think there is merit in being in the office together at moments. If you want to coach, if you want to transfer experience, if you want to plan and, and uh, you know, if you want to have planning sessions uh, uh, or, uh, or off-sites whatsoever, uh, then there is a merit to be together. Uh, but that doesn't mean that you have to be in the office every day. So we're flexible, we're hybrid. Mm -hmm. and we're rolling out hybrid where we expect some two-thirds Mm -hmm. of our workforce mm -hmm. to always work in a hybrid way.